Yo, what is happening? Today, I want to talk about a concept, a mindset shift that is really changing everything for me. First, set the scene. It's been wild the last couple of days here in Japan and Tokyo. Today, there's a typhoon coming in, so that's very exciting. This morning, it was just dumping rain,、um, which is pretty cool. I had no idea it was a typhoon yet. Apparently. So, got that going. And then, yeah, just like last night, just sitting there doing a little like before bed meditation and a little earthquake. It's just pretty wild how I feel like two earthquakes a week, I would, I would say on average, pretty small ones. But like last week,、um, bigger one, my phone. I think everybody in Japan, your phones like get a notification and they start. This is, <laughs> sounds terrifying not to scare anybody, but it starts saying earthquake, 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 prepare. <laughs> like you look at your phone and it's got like the caution, like yellow thing going. And I'm like, oh my, what?、And、like as it starts doing that, the earthquake hit.、Um, You know, there's not much time to actually prepare. So it's like, get under a chair or something, but under a desk. I usually don't do anything. I just sit there. I don't know if that's the best course of action, but that was kind of a terrifying one. That's happened twice where the phone has gone off. And I actually use an app called Nerve, which is pretty cool.、It、tells you, like, it does the same thing. So my Nerve app and just the, the one that everybody has, it's just like programmed. Into, I don't know how it works, but everybody's phones go off and it's kind of terrifying, but it does work. It was just crazy for it to go off and then, you know, two seconds later, get hit with an earthquake. And that could be terrifying. Like somebody commented once on a post I made about just, they said, Are you not scared about earthquakes, tsunamis, you know, things with Japan? And I'm like, well, am I going to not move here? You know, it's been my dream for years just because I'm scared of earthquakes. I'm not the only one who lives in Japan. I'm not the only one who might be scared. And it is, it's definitely off putting, but, you know, we could live our life in fear. And it might never happen what we imagine, or we can do it, you know, go for it. And I think you rise to the occasion more than, more than you think you will. And it's interesting how, like, everybody's going through it here, too. Like, when crazy rains come, typhoon, you know, I'm not alone. Like, everyone, you know, you hunker down, and then everybody just keeps living their lives. It's just an interesting, like with earthquakes too, like it's not like things are totally shut down and you just kind of improvise and then you just keep keep moving. I think it's an interesting、uh, way of being and just interesting thing about Japan. Like you hear about, you know, obviously in the news and everything, things are so much more terrified than they actually are. Um, you hear about Japan, the earthquakes and the disasters and stuff, and they are part of life. And you just kind of move through it. It happens, and then it's over. And yeah, I think it's, it's just an interesting, like everyone, like kids are just, they, they grow up feeling earthquakes all the time and having these typhoons. And it's just a very, it's humbling, really. Um, Japan is like a very naturally active place, to say the least. That's not actually what I wanted to talk about, but just wanted to share a little update from life in Japan. The big mindset, sh mindset shift that I've been marinating on and that has really been amplified lately is this concept of. Instead of trying to let go, switching it and let stay. Instead of trying to let go, 
whatever it is, pain, hurt, heartbreak, sorrow, sadness, depression, anxiety, let it in, let it stay, let it come in. And I got this idea from multiple sources. One is my man, Jim Prusak, the pain PT on YouTube, who I've had a couple of sessions with him, but I've just watched his videos every day, actually, for the last three months as I've healed and have been on this journey of healing chronic pain in my body that I've realized is coming because of emotion. And it's not actually a physical thing in my body that I, so I've had back pain for six years and I've realized that to heal it, I need to heal my nervous system. I need to just learn how to um, understand myself and just kind of unload a lot of things and understand myself better to heal the physical pain. So basically the my brain is creating physical pain in my body to distract me from what's actually going on inside of me. And this is called TMS, which is a mind body syndrome. The mind body syndrome kind of pioneered by this guy, Dr. John Sarno, incredible human being. Um, and it might seem like an esoteric way of viewing pain or, you know, it's, woo woo or something but that is why so many people don't believe in it that is why so many people stay in pain this is truly the the reason for like nearly all chronic pain and people aren't aware of it they don't want to accept it i didn't want to accept it for six years i kind of you know it was it's always a thought like is this like is this physical I just couldn't, I couldn't find any answers when trying to heal back pain in a physical way. And then like my mom would say, maybe it's emotional, like she thought it was. And I'm just like, it can't be like, what would I even begin healing emotionally to heal the physical pain in my body? But then when I really hit rock bottom three months ago, um, it was like the stars aligned and I realized that, wow, this is emotional. And there is a lot that I have not processed within myself that is creating physical pain in my body. And as I've started to read about it, I read three books by Dr. John Sarno. I've started to just go deep with like therapy and stuff into my past and into who I am and what I may be frustrated about in my life and what I'm angry about, kind of repressed anger from childhood and just about daily life. And as I've started exploring these things, the pain has gotten a lot better. And you have to really live as if there's nothing wrong with you because there isn't physically. Like you have to retrain your brain to realize that it's just been oversensitized and conditioned to create pain because we pretty much get addicted to it. Like being in pain for six years, it's all I would think about. I'd live my life and I'd do things to distract me and I'd travel and I'd write and pretty much lived as best as I could, but pain never left my mind. And it seems so obvious that it was physical, but now that I realize there's nothing physically wrong with me and that it is emotional, it's been what I've called a spiritual odyssey to, to really free myself of this of this pain and understand myself better and understand my own frustrations and anger and um, what's really causing this. So if you look up TMS, there's it's a lot on it. Look up John Sarna books, TMS. Honestly, you could just start with Jim Prusak, the pain PT on YouTube. He's been so transformative. And that's where this idea actually comes from. Um, yeah, he's great. I've had like a few sessions, like I said, with him, he's like a TMS coach and he's helped me through a lot of stuff, but just watching his YouTube videos every day has been so helpful. And he has five kind of, um, practices, five steps that's just to implement at all times, pretty much to, to heal. And as I said, like, you know, it sounds like there's a lot to do to heal emotionally. And that's what kind of 
kept me stuck in the past of being like, this can't be emotional. Like it sounds like more work than just trying to take a pill or go to the chiropractor or fix something physically. That's, that's what we want to do. You know, we want a pill for everything. We want an easy fix. We want the doctor to tell us you have this, this is what you have to do and you will be healed in this amount of time. That's easy. That's convenient. That's not how it works. So much pain is emotional and we can deny it or we can actually entertain this idea. And I'm feeling better now than I have in years. And I'm not out of the woods by any means, but this concept that I'm going to go into of letting it in is really the only thing you have to do to heal. So I'm going the extra step because I want to understand myself and I want to understand my childhood and my personality and why I've gotten to this point and like why my brain is creating pain in the first place and this kind of stuff. But you really don't need to fully. It's called just knowledge therapy. All you have to do is understand. And John Sarna explains all of this. You could even just look up Dr. John Sarna on YouTube and watch his lecture and it explains everything in detail much more succinctly than I can. And he is a professional, um, healed thousands and thousands of people. And it's still not an accepted and really well, not embraced at all, but like, it's not even a, it's an afterthought, you know, like this can't be emotional. So look up Dr. John Sarno. But Jim Prusak, the pain PT, back to his five steps. The first one is acknowledging like when you do feel something and I'm talking about back pain, but this applies to anything, like anything we're feeling. Um, let it in, which is real. For, so sorry. First step is to just acknowledge what it is. So feeling something to say, okay, I know what this is like. It's my brain trying to create pain in my body. But like, what's actually underneath this? What emotion is there? Is it anger that I'm not processing, that I'm not looking at? Okay, what am I mad about? It's like, all right, something happened with my in my relationship and I'm trying to brush it under the rug, but like, I'm actually really pissed off about this and it can very well be creating pain in your body. Second thing is to relax. And that is really every, like, that's what it all comes down to is relaxing the nervous system, <sighs> relaxing every part of your body and training the brain that you are safe. You are okay. You don't need the pain anymore. The third and crucial step here is to allow it in, allow it in, allow it in. Give it the green light and it could be back pain. It could be anxiety, it could be depression. It could be, I'm dealing with like sinus situation right now. And I think it's what's called the symptom imperative. When you start healing this stuff emotionally, the brain creates other problems in your body as a distraction. Like, uh, he's on to us here. The back pain's going away. Let me create this other thing to make you think again that it's physical. And this concept applies to anything. So it's like a lot of people that heal, they're through TMS healing, like they heal their back pain. They get really bad anxiety or they even get like depressed or something emotional happens right when they heal to take the pain, like to take the place of the pain from before and that's like oh why am i why am i having these anxiety attacks like what's going on and you think again like there's something physically wrong there's something wrong with you you have to fix this thing instead of being like oh it's the exact same thing it's back pain but now it's coming in the form of anxiety and the same exact thing applies here let it in give it the green light say you're fine like there's nothing wrong you have full reign to come in here and do what you please, but I'm not going to back down. 
I'm not going to fear this. I'm not going to fear this pain. I'm going to let it in, let it come and stay as long as it needs because that's the only way it's going to flow through you and pass through your system. Um, the next couple of steps, the third one is to allow it. And then it's like, just kind of move on. The fourth step is distract yourself. Don't focus on the pain anymore. So you allow it in, just say, I'm not like putting up a fight. You can come in, <laughs> the door is open and I'm just going to keep living my life. And that's the fifth step. Keep living your life. Do whatever you would do if you didn't, were not feeling the physical symptoms. That's that's how you beat it. And it's easier said than done because we're so accustomed to fighting everything, every discomfort, every negative feeling, every emotion. We either fight, we freeze, fight, freeze, or we flee. So we want to fight everything that we're feeling. So it's like, ah, I don't want to feel this. You know, you have a sickness coming on, like you feel a little cold, you're like, no, 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 like anything, I'll do anything not to feel that way. Um, back pain, I've been fighting it vehemently for six years, just like every waking moment thinking about back pain and trying to make it go away and oh, how does it feel right now? It's called hypervigilance, always focusing on it. Or so any, so apply that to any like negative emotion or just anything that we feel or anything that we don't want to happen in life, we fight it. We just fight, fight, fight. Or we freeze. It makes us kind of stop and just put our hands up and like, I don't know what to do. I can't move forward. I can't beat this. I can't move on with my life. That's freezing. Or we flee, which is like we numb ourselves, which I did. I would drink. Um, and that would make the pain go away when I would drink. And you always feel worse the next day. It's not like I was self-medicating every night, but like on the weekends when I'd go out with my friends and like party, it's like, oh yeah, my back's fine right now. Like just not thinking about it. And also the numbing effects of alcohol. This is fleeing. This is fleeing from what we feel. And I mean, alcohol is a very easy one. We use it to numb ourselves from emotions and things we feel physically and emotionally and mentally, um, drugs, or we just run from the problem. We won't face what we're feeling, what we're going through. So just fight, freeze, flee, or face it. And to face is to allow it in and say, come on in. An open book, the door is open. Do what you will, have your way with me. I'm not gonna put up any resistance anymore. I am gonna keep living my life. I'm not gonna act as if you have control. I'm the pilot of this ship, I'm the captain now, and I'm controlling my life. And do what you need to do, but you know, you don't got control of me anymore. So this is the practice that I'm really trying to implement and then I was watching um, the Andrew Huberman podcast and he had this woman on Martha Beck and I didn't know about her before, but this was an incredible podcast. She is epic. I got to read her books, but she said the same thing and it hit so hard. She said, um, she's talking about how to... Well, I'll just read it. She said, step number one is suffering. We all have that. You may have never felt good in your life, but you have suffered. That is for sure. That's the first noble truth of Buddhism. There is suffering in this life. Pay attention to your suffering without fighting it. Allow it to be there. I did the meditation. If something is physically painful or, emotion or emotionally painful, I used to say, let go, let go to myself. It didn't work. So one day I said, all right, you can stay. Let it stay. And so I do a let it stay meditation. If there's pain, let it stay. If there's sorrow, let it stay. And as soon as I let it stay, it begins to change. So first is suffering. Second step is compassionate attention to one's suffering with no resistance. 
And the third step is to follow the compassion that is naturally being directed toward the suffering until you find yourself centered in it. And that is a huge relief. And that, I love it. It really boils down what I'm saying of let it stay. How often do we tell ourselves, let it go, let it go. And it actually works. You know, with what, what I'm dealing with now, with like the sinus thing and being like, what what is stuck in me right now that I need to let go of? Like, I think that's what this thing is. It's like, it's emotion or something that it just has to pass through me. It's been like a month and a half. It's frustrating as hell, but like, and I've been telling myself, I'm like, okay, what do I got to let go of? What, I'm, I'm journaling, I'm writing about it and talking about it stuff, but it's like, that's all resistance. Letting go, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's what we want to do. It's nothing wrong with it by any means, but by letting stay, we actually are letting go. And why Jim Prusak's five tips or five steps work and why this works is because it does the opposite of what the brain is so accustomed to doing and it just flips you know, what we naturally do on its head. Instead of fighting, you say, come on in. Instead, instead of telling yourself, let go, let go, let go, which only creates more tension. It's like, let it stay. Let it stay. And the brain, whenever it's holding on, it's like, let it stay. Okay, I guess it doesn't really care anymore. And that means we should probably go. So they hit the high road. And I think it's like, it can be applied to anything truly, like just anything that we don't want to deal with and we want to push away. So, you know, she says the first step is suffering. Ain't that the truth? We all know what it means to suffer. If you're a human being, you know what that feels like. And it's so natural for us to want to combat that suffering and to push it away and to just be free of any negative things we feel anything that makes us feel less than human unworthy unloved unwhole and all that does is create more tension more resistance so try it try this mindset shit mindset shift let whatever you're dealing with stay say let it stay and drop the guard stop trying to let it go let it stay. See what happens. And then when you say let it stay, it's like, okay, what, what is this actually? It's, I just feel compassion for myself that I'm going through this thing. I'm human, suffering in some way, and just find presence and stillness and truth in that compassion like she says and it is it is relief like well i think these things are so helpful because it just takes the weight off like the constant need to fight to let go it's more stress it's more effort and that is not what we need to do really it's it's a relief to be like, you can stay. Fuck it. I'm done fighting. Stay. Do what you're going to do. I don't care anymore. To truly believe it. But I think if we keep, you know, telling ourselves, stay. It's like, just relax. Let life stay. Let it all stay. Just let it happen. I think we'll find that things pass through us with, with less resistance let it stay much love y'all